Hello, and welcome to Far Rockaway. Today I'm taking a ride on the Long Island Railroad from the end of the Far Rockaway branch to Jamaica. I didn't have a lot of extra time at the station, so I don't have much footage of the station itself, but really, there's nothing to talk about. It's just kind of there. There are a couple ticket machines, but beyond that, it's just a platform with an awning. The real star of the show for this trip is the train currently waiting at the station, an almost brand new set of Kawasaki M9 EMUs. M9s are not a particularly rare sight on the Long Island Railroad anymore, with around 74 cars in service at the time of filming, but it was still super cool to get to see one in person, let alone ride on one. M9s were ordered to replace the aging fleet of Bud M3 rail cars that first entered service in the 1980s. Walking to the front of the train, it's easy to see their incredible looks and their updated form over the M7s. M9s take inspiration from both the M7s and M8s before them, with the running light configuration, window style, and overall shape from the M7s, but with updated LED destination displays and overall upgraded safety equipment from the M8s. Now it's time to hop on board. There wasn't anyone else in this car, so I chose to sit in a group of four. There is plenty of space for me and my equipment, although, much like the M7s, I don't think there is enough space for two people of my stature to sit across from one another. The upholstery is brand new and feels very comfortable. There is also an armrest built into the wall, but still no armrests between the seats, much like on Metro North. There is a luggage rack above the seats on either side of the train for medium-sized bags. A much appreciated addition are the outlets on both sides of the train in each row. The M9As will have USB ports in addition to the standard plugs when those get delivered for the East Side Access program with service to Grand Central Terminal. There was maybe one other person on my train this afternoon, well at least towards the front of the train, which meant I was able to move freely about the cabin. M9s have multiple 32-inch multimedia screens located throughout the train. In the accessible seating area, there are spring-loaded seats, which allow the areas to serve both people with disabilities and regular passengers. There is also another LED display sign at the end of each car. The doors between each of the two cars on M9 sets are electronically operated, making it easy to move in between each of the married pairs. Towards the end of each car is a smaller, slightly secluded area that serves as both a seating area and as a part of the cab of the train, should that car be at the head of the train. The doors between each M9 set are much heavier and require a lot more effort to get past. It's not especially great when some stations cannot accommodate longer trains, forcing people to move towards the front of the train. Just after 2.50 p.m., our train pulled out from Far Rockaway Station and began the quick 30-minute journey to Jamaica. As we depart out of Far Rockaway, let's take a look at some quick stats about our train. My train this afternoon is LIRR Far Rockaway train number 8855 and is driven by four Kawasaki M9 EMUs. Each M9 car is powered by four Mitsubishi Electric AC traction motors, although horsepower figures are yet to be published, but power output is presumably similar to the M7s. M9s are rated for a top speed of 100 miles per hour, but operate at a top speed of 80 miles per hour. The MTA has requested up to 676 cars for both the Long Island Railroad and Metro North, consisting of M9s and M9As, 416 of which will go to the Long Island Railroad. If you want to be around when more videos get posted, please hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel and the content I make. I would love to keep doing this for as long as possible and your support helps me continue to do so. Thanks. I didn't have time to grab a physical ticket for my trip today, so I had to purchase one electronically using the MTA's eTix app, which is super easy to use. The eTix app allows you to pre-purchase tickets and activate them before boarding. Seating on single rows is very similar to seating on M7s, with enough leg space to be comfortable on longer journeys. The outlet is still present in this row and in all rows throughout the train, as well as the grab handles on the back of the seats. Notably, the headrests on the back of the seats are quite large and would be rather comfortable for catching a quick nap on your journey. 
Now it's time to take a look at the bathrooms on board. The M9 bathrooms are very clean and super nice. There's a lit door lock indicator on the wall, which is a welcome addition. There is also a trash can on board, which is excellent. I found out earlier in my travels that Metro North does not have trash cans on board, so the inclusion here is incredibly appreciated. The faucet has a projected red dot to indicate where to put your hand, which is an upgrade from the button on the underside of the mirror on M7s. The dryer works well, and overall I have to say this is one of the nicer, if not the nicest, commuter bathrooms I've ever used. It looks like Far Rockaway is a very underused branch, or at least it seemed that way while I was on board, as I was the only person in this car, and maybe one of ten on the train as a whole. One of the nice improvements on M9s are the improved LED display signs, which include the next station, as well as the car position in the train, which is helpful for shorter stations. The next station, as indicated by said sign, is Lawrence. Station stops on this route are super quick, as it was off-peak on a Saturday afternoon. Soon thereafter, the Far Rockaway branch rejoins the Montauk and Babylon branches at Valley Stream before heading north towards Jamaica. One of the things I noticed on the M9s are the incredibly clear announcements. New York Transit is notorious for its bad audio quality, so the clarity of announcements on M9s is greatly appreciated. This is the train to Atlantic Terminal, Brooklyn. The next station is Jamaica. It's only been 30 minutes since leaving Far Rockaway and we are pulling into Jamaica. Jamaica is the main LIRR transit hub and connects the commuter network with the New York subway and JFK air train. As I hopped off, the M7 across the platform departed and pulling in directly behind it was another M9. I have never seen a train follow so close to another when pulling into the station, so it was certainly an interesting catch. After both trains departed, I made my way to the main concourse on the far side of the station. Jamaica is more of a transfer point than a final destination station, as is indicated by the lack of amenities around the concourse, with only ticket machines and a small convenience store off to one side. The air train stops on the far side of the station and is a direct connection to JFK, which is super convenient for passengers traveling to and from the airport. It's actually how I'll be getting to the airport on my way back to Austin in a few days. Taking the elevator down to street level brings passengers to the original station building. Here passengers can purchase tickets and talk to customer service if need be. And that's it for today's trip report. Next week I will be back in Los Angeles to give a tour of LA's Union Station, so hit that subscribe button if you want to be around when that video goes live. I also want to apologize for not uploading last weekend. My schedule was a mess this past week, and thus I didn't have time to make a trip report as I had intended. But now I should be back on top of things and weekly uploads should continue. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.